Doom Annihilation is the newly revealed title for the upcoming Universal direct video adaptation of the Smash hit video game. In this, today's video, I will break down and discuss the newly revealed synopsis for the upcoming movie, break down what it might mean, explore the kickback for the fanbase of the games surrounding those very controversial statements made by the cast and director, and wrap up with what I believe this could all mean for the potential future of the movie. It's also important to note that I have reached out to the director for further comments on what I'm about to say and as yet he has not responded. So as always with these mini documentaries, please do grab a coffee, sit back and I hope you enjoy. On Friday, DreadCentral.com, the horror-based website, published an article detailing exclusive images and the official synopsis for the upcoming new entry in the Doom property franchise. Doom Annihilation. Although initially there were rumours that Doom Annihilation would be a sequel to the 2005 Doom film featuring The Rock and Carl Urban, these reports have now been debunked. Though it is easy to see how these rumours had started considering the synopsis for the film. Doom Annihilation follows a group of space marines as they respond to a distress call from a base on a Martian moon only to discover that it's been overrun by demonic creatures who threaten to create hell on Earth. So as you can see from this, it's very easy to see how everything that had come out for the project to date could have led those to think that it was a sequel. Now, interestingly, in the Dread Central article, which I have linked below in the description box, they make special note of the fact that the Space Marines in the synopsis are now 100% confirmed to be UAC Space Marines, an important factor the fanbase would likely appreciate. As per the article, Dread Central were lucky enough to get their hands on exclusive images. These three images show the demonic creatures that the synopsis makes mention of and the two main protagonists in the film. We will touch on the two female actors in a moment as they are front and centre in the kickback from the fanbase, for valid reasons. But first, let's look at the two demonic creatures that will be in the movie. We have one image that shows one of these creatures as a feature, but then there is also another separate entity in the background of a separate image. Both depict a very similar beast, though they are not one and the same. The feature image shows what appears to be something reminiscent to the imp that appears in the games. Obviously, this is a human converted, mutated or transformed due to the clothing. But as far as what it could be from the game, an imp is really as close as I could gather from taking a look at the in-game lore versus the image. It doesn't really match up entirely, but it is fairly close, and the way the monster is squatting, the acute facial features, indicate some inspiration from the imp. And of course, the background demon in this image is much and much the same. Though from their clothes, they are not one and the same creature, we can see the first feature is potentially a scientist of sorts, and I say this, of course, from the lab coat. Now, we don't know which way they are going to go in the film. There has been little leaks here and there, but these new images do seem to indicate that they are going in a similar way as the first film. In the highly panned 2005 movie, the scientists on Mars were injecting humans with alien DNA, mutating them into monsters. Now, we know that this new version of Doom is said to be a faithful adaptation of the source material, and this was stated by Tony Giglio, the director himself. Now, from what we see here, although it was confirmed demons would be the feature antagonists in the movie, it would seem in some way, shape or form, that they are twisting humans into inspired entities from the source material rather than a direct gateway to hell and being overrun with actual demons. Now the plot synopsis is encouraging, but now let's explore the kickback from the fans surrounding this film and why, unfortunately, it may very well impact on the film's success. Last year, the 9th of May, Amy Manson, the film's lead, took to Twitter and caused somewhat of a controversy in the Doom fandom by tweeting, who needs a Doom guy? With multiple hashtags and emojis, ones which can easily be interpreted as disrespectful to the fandom. Hashtag official, hashtag taking over, hashtag boss, hashtag Doom movie, hashtag Doom, hashtag tearing shit up. 
Now, of course, the implication behind this photo was that Doom Guy was not in the movie. Now, this was later debunked by the director in a very roundabout way when he hinted that Doom Guy was in the film. However, upon research for this video, I attempted to recover the tweet, but it would appear that the director has now removed it. Again, I have reached out to the director himself for further comment on this, but he has not responded at the time of this recording. In fact, Tony Giglio has actually removed all tweets from June, the exact same time he had hinted that Doom Guy would be in the movie. Now, all that can be seen when researching is almost a backtrack on that statement. When asked directly about Doom Guy or the Doom Slayer, Tony Giglio has replied with a rather indirect answer which simply hints at damage control for the movie. Now don't take my word for it, please. Here on the screen now is the conversation chain. Make up your own minds, but please do take a look at the special note of the very direct line of questioning and Tony's reply. Now I can appreciate his stance. There are quotas that need to be met when making a film. Sadly, these change due to what's current and popular in Hollywood and what perception the studio wants to put out. Tony is rightfully just stating that they have done the best they can with the story they had to craft for the movie, given the climate and given the quotas. That's of course my personal interpretation of his statements anyway. However, when you view either side of this, the kickback from the fan base is genuinely understandable, and I'll explain. The controversy all centered around the Amy Manson tweet, and the kickback from the fan base was swift and wide. The Doom games all feature a male character that the players play as. It is the center point to the game. He is the Doom Guy. He is the Doom Slayer. In the upcoming film, the leads are women. There is nothing inherently wrong with that at all. The issue lies in the current climate and the fan base associated with the movie. You have a game that is enjoyed by everyone, male, female, whatever. But a perception of masculinity is there in the game. The fan base wants to see ripping and tearing from Doom Guy. It is the quintessential Doom experience. So when we see the female lead in the Doom movie, it will instantly place fans on the back foot. Then, through lack of management, you have members from the cast disenfranchising the fan base even further by poorly calculated tweets. The impression that most fans would get when they only see females in the lead is of course that there is no Doom Guy. Now this is an issue that most fans had with the original movie, of course among many, many other things. Now this impression is near confirmed in the eyes of those fans when the lead actor tweets who needs Doom Guy. And of course this is also a franchise that has little to no care for the current social justice climate that we are in. The makers of Doom Eternal. In fact, we're recently in hot water for the demo play of the next game because of a few comedic lines that poked fun at the outrage culture that we are currently in. So of course, with a franchise that is so steeped in this kind of history and with a fan base that responds so positively towards it, it's a little surprise that the fans did not approve of Amy Manson's tweet. So with respect, of course, to the final product, what can we expect to see? The rumours of Doom Guy appearing are currently just rumours now, mainly due to the backtracking and deleting of tweets. Now it may be, of course, that the movie is edited and finished and that the footage that featured the Doom Guy, the Doom Slayer, has had to have been cut, hence the deleting of the tweets and the indirect answers from Tony. Unfortunately though, I believe all of the above would indicate that we are going to be getting a very watered down Doom movie injected with the Hollywood quota that we have sadly come to expect in this day and age. Now that does not mean that it will not be a good movie. However, it likely could have been titled something else instead and it could have been better received by a lot of the fans. So this is all just an assumption from looking at everything at hand, of course, I do have to say this, but either way, it will be interesting to see how this pans out. The film is set to drop in fall of this year, and from the director himself, a teaser is expected very, very soon. If you did enjoy this deep dive into the Doom Annihilation movie and the troubled production, please do hit subscribe to stay tuned for all of my mini documentaries and deep dive videos, along with news and updates in the world of pop culture and movie news. As always, please do leave your thoughts down below. I've been Mr. H. Take care.